Ladies and gentlemen, the date is August the 23rd. It is a Wednesday. It is 1.15 in the afternoon where I am. And the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 official gameplay trailer has been released. Now, I've taken this video straight from the Gamescom IGN reveal, which happened last night. Is Faith in Call of Duty restored? Is this a game that we can look forward to? And how do people online seem to be responding to it? Let's get into the video. So I'm going to start with my initial impressions of the gameplay trailer, what I think about what they've done well, what I think could be good about the game, and move into what some of the responses I saw online were. Now, Call of Duty, however you may feel about Call of Duty, does probably the best job apart from maybe one or two other series when it comes to big name triple a if you will shooters at delivering an immersive modern warfare no pun intended experience to its players and what i mean by this is in watching the trailer there's definitely no denying if you will that the game looks great the visual fidelity is there, the atmosphere is there, the technology is there. It's not overly futuristic, encroaching in the realm of sci-fi. It's a Call of Duty Modern Warfare title. The soldiers look great. The gunplay looks good. It sounds good. Everything that makes a great Call of Duty campaign is there. But that is what we're watching. In this trailer, this is not a multiplayer scene, this is not a Warzone 3 scene, or Call of Duty Online, whatever that will end up being. This is a Call of Duty campaign trailer. And they always do the campaign well. I played the Modern Warfare 2 campaign, I did not finish it, uh, however, it was a good campaign. It looked great. Uh, sounded great, just like what we're watching right now. Now that being said, is that enough to restore faith in the franchise? Modern Warfare 2 had a great campaign, much like what we're looking at here. Going into the uh, house, the raid on the house, right as the game started. Night vision, very slow, very gritty, very atmospheric. Everyone loved it. Everyone thought, okay, this is it. Call of Duty's back. We're finally getting the gritty Call of Duty we deserve. And in some sense, I suppose we did, at least in terms of the campaign. Multiplayer, however, failed to really do anything for me personally. Call of Duty multiplayer is Call of Duty multiplayer. It's the same as it always has been. I don't expect Call of Duty multiplayer to ever really change. The experience that a lot of games seem to be taking on now, particularly Battlefield moving forward, uh, hopefully Call of Duty as well, is an all-in-one immersive online multiplayer environment where everything that is Call of Duty and the Call of Duty universe comes together. Now, what that will make the next iteration of Warzone, I don't know. I don't know if Call of Duty Warzone will be just Warzone, if it will be Warzone 3, if it'll be Warzone with a new map name, I don't know. I think what most people are really anxious about though, and why I see online the faith in the game being so low, is because the campaign is great for all of about six hours, and then the longevity of the game being Warzone and being multiplayer fails to deliver. DMZ, in my opinion, was a royal letdown. I did not enjoy that game mode at all. I thought it was super quirky, uh, really didn't fulfill anything within me as far as a more hardcore uh, Call of Duty experience. 
I thought that the original Warzone was okay. I liked the map, the gameplay was nice. After we went through the iterations we went through with Caldera all the way through the 1980s remake, which was ridiculous in my opinion, into Warzone 2, everything just sort of slowly started to fall off. Now, this is supposedly the first time that the game picks up directly after another game ended, whatever that is good for, again, specifically in terms of the campaign. Um, I suppose there are talks of, as well about this being rebuilt on a new engine. I don't know how accurate that is. If it is a new engine, the reference is probably to the same new engine that the last Call of Duty was built on. But I don't think that at this point it's necessarily a problem with the engine or even the mechanics of the game at the foundational level because the game looks good. It sounds good. The atmosphere is there. The tech is there. But I think the faith has been lost in major titles over the years, including Call of Duty as well as Battlefield, because of the fact that the multiplayer experience, the longevity of the game, simply hasn't been there, hasn't lived up to what we wanted it to live up to. And in the age of forums, social media, beta testing, alpha testing, Discord channels, where the feedback is almost instantaneous, the feedback is live, the feedback is there daily, it really just doesn't make sense why these companies don't deliver. Now I know some people will say, and I'm even of the mind too, that when you're trying to please literally millions, hundreds of millions of people, it's hard to get everyone in the boat happy. But on the flip side of that coin, I've also always had the mind that when you are a studio in the position of Activision, as a publisher rather, Infinity Ward, Sledgehammer Games, Raven Software, when you're a AAA studio that's making billions of dollars off of the content that you produce, even though the developers, the artists, the technicians, the writers, all of these guys and gals have a right to creative input and decision making, you're serving the consumer at such a high level that you don't simply get to just create something entirely unique that, unique that you think is good. You've got to create something that people want. Because you're serving such a mass audience, because you're making so much money off of the people that are playing your game, You've got to give those people spending that money what they want. So simply saying that, uh, this time around it didn't live up to what we thought it would, or we're going to release the game, and yeah, we know we're going to have to spend the next 6 to 12 months fixing this, or how about we're going to release the game, and it's going to actually include content from our previous games because that's what everybody liked better. Instead of just creating a unique experience in the first place that everyone thought was good and wanted to play, that piggybacked off of its best features, we'll just create a new game and revert all of its content back to the way that it originally was before. Now, the last thing I wanna to touch on in the video to sum it all up is this overall feeling that a lot of people seem to have online that faith in the franchise, faith in the game being something that sets it apart, is simply not there. I was looking at the comments here under the video that IGN released, and the first 15 or 20 of them, I didn't go too far, are pretty much entirely negative. Uh, you have people saying, again, visually they, visually they nailed it, um, but it simply looks like a new DLC, which in all fairness, they did say that it was a direct continuation of the previous game. Uh, so that's not entirely surprising. Um, the most expensive DLC ever. Uh, mission looks like something out of Modern Warfare 2. A lot of people were also complaining about the price. That's really kind of up in the air for me. Uh, it costs so much money to make these games at high resolutions that the price is what it is. It is expensive. 
Um, but I think people feel that way mostly because the game uh, doesn't deliver what they want it to deliver. Um, so the general consensus at the bottom seems to be that faith in the franchise and faith for Activision, Infinity Ward, Sledgehammer, whoever it is that has their hands in this pot to deliver something that's going to go the distance, that's going to provide people with what they want, that's going to give people a reason to come back to the game time and time again, spend money on the game, etc., uh, simply isn't there. And you can't blame the gamer. You can't blame the consumer. You can't blame us. Because we've been delivered piece of content after piece of content year after year after year that simply failed to meet expectations. It was delivered in an unfinished or unpolished state. They spent the next six to eight months fixing it, postponed their seasonal updates, etc., etc. I've said this for a long time. And I truly believe that several years back when the rise of pre-alpha gaming, um, early access gaming, open beta gaming, whatever you want to call it, whatever terminology might be used, first hit the scene, starting with the likes of uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, to give you one large example, this trend really ruined gaming. And the reason it ruined gaming is because it satisfied the need for people to have things as quickly as possible. But it created a monster wherein you didn't have to give them something good. You didn't have to give them something finished. And they would still pay for it. They would still play it. So you could essentially release a game, maybe after a month or two or three of development, and be paid to work on that game and really have no recourse, really have no reprimand. And this created a really negative trend in gaming. Now that's an entirely separate topic. To wrap the video up, I think the trailer looks great. Call of Duty never seems to disappoint when it comes to gameplay trailers. Neither does Battlefield, neither does any AAA title, really. Trailers are curated, high definition, sequences of the game that are meant to make the game look its best. They are really not a reliable or accurate representation of the game itself. Not to mention the fact that again the campaign is only a small portion of the overall game experience especially when it comes to COD. COD delivers an excellent campaign, they usually deliver an awesome co-op experience, but the longevity of COD and the reason that everyone buys COD is to play the multiplayer, more so to play the Battle Royale feature that Co uh, Call of Duty has now adopted and integrated. How that will turn out remains to be seen. I think it's very simple what people want. I know it's very simple what I want. I don't want anything World War related. I'm not sure why that keeps popping up as a trend. Most of the youth of today don't even know what those wars are, have no idea what they were about. I would be surprised if uh, information was still taught in school about those wars. It doesn't make sense to have a AAA developer cater to a 1980s, 1970s Cold War, World War S game. We're way past that now. Nobody wants it. We want what we see right here. We want a modern experience exactly the way it's presented in the campaign. It obviously has to cater to casual players as well as the hardcore. But again, that could easily be done through separate game modes. Not game modes like DMZ. That's not what we want. That's not what we need. That could have been something so much more and so much better than it was. We get it. The game has to appeal to the masses, but the information is out there. The information is out there of what people are looking for, what people are expecting from the developers. You have creative liberties, yes, as a developer, as a creator, as an artist, but when you serve such a large mass of people at the scale that you do, and you make the amount of money that you do from them playing your game directly, you have to give them what they want. 
If you were an indie studio making something completely unique, then that's different. You know the risk. This right here isn't a risk because of the name alone. And that has become all too apparent over the years. Call of Duty, Battlefield, many titles have ridden the wave of their name and reputation to the point to where the integrity of the game, the reliability of the game to deliver an experience has been pummeled completely into the ground. Now, will this game live up to the hype? Who knows? Game trailers these days really don't mean much to me. Again, they're curated to look the best, to make the game look its best. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 is set to release in November, I believe. It said November the 10th. So we'll have to wait and see. As far as I know, there hasn't been much revealed on the way of Warzone, the online experience, where that's going to go, what that's going to look like. I'm sure that that will start to trickle down the pipeline soon. There'll be plenty of content to make on it. I will probably play the game. I'm always up for and open to playing new games. Um, I'll probably play the next Battlefield game. I want these games to be good. I want them to be fun because they do what they do the best. They have the budget for it. They have the resources and the talent for it. So no other game is going to be able to deliver at the scale that these games deliver. All we can do for now is wait and see. Gamescom 2023 is still live. I'm not exactly sure how many days that'll be going on. There's been a lot of game reveals already during the overnight preview. As far as Call of Duty goes, I hope, I want it to be good. I want it to be great beyond the campaign. I hope whatever they decide to do delivers that type of experience for us. Let me know what you guys think if this makes it way across your timeline. I appreciate you watching the video, listening to my commentary. Uh, as Call of Duty continues to release information, I'll continue to release videos on what I think and how I see people responding. And until the next video drops, appreciate you guys. Take care.